Memory Skill Show number three, and we are in Mount Dora, Florida. And today's topic uh, is absent-mindedness. And absent-mindedness is the thing that will plague us whether we're 20 years old or 105 years old. Correct, Dr. Joe? You got it. Absent-mindedness. Absolutely. And I can't be absent-minded saying this. My name is John Keith, the memory trainer, and this is Dr. Joe Pons of the Memory College. Okay, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good tip, but we don't have to get that in. But anyway, absent mind is a, uh, a very thing, a thing that we can reduce uh, inside and stature and, and get you not to worry about it. And there are a couple of tips, uh, correct? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, consider the word itself, absent mindedness. It simply means that your mind is absent at the present time. For example, if you come into the house, you lay your keys down, your mind is not on your keys, not at that moment. That's why when you go looking for your keys, you can't remember where they are because your mind wasn't engaged when you set your keys down. Same thing with your glasses, uh, pens, or anything else. Did I lock the front door? <laughs> yes. How about being 50 miles down the road into your vacation? And you think, Oh, did I lock the front door? Did I turn the iron off? You know, uh, those kinds of things. Yeah. And it brings about a lot of frustration and stress. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can't depend on your smartphone. There's a lot of little things now you can see. You can blow the garage door, lock the front door too. But there are a myriad of other things. I'd rather have the smart brain used instead of your smartphone. Uh, I think it's a little more comforting. <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Not to take away from the devices, and I was always asked about absent-mindedness in uh, the previous show we talked about names, uh, and it's like, uh, do you need a machine to do this for you or use the best OS, meaning operational system, operational system for your computer, or the best computer, which is your brain. So, um, you know, I tend to use the best before I use the other things. And absent mind is one of the things, that, you know, just that I always get around calling the Keith one second technique, which is really look at the action for one additional second. If you're locking the front door, look at it for a second. If you're turning off the oven or the stove, look at that action for one additional second. It will help you. Now, the concept is that, will you do this every day? And, and it's still up in the air because you may be so stressed out. Remember, stress is the enemy to memory. Uh, that you may not do that extra second. But if you try and make it a habit, it will reduce your absent-mindedness. Absolutely. Think of the times when, perhaps, uh, you didn't remember where you parked your car. And that's a biggie with a lot of people. They go into a store, they run in, you know, it's an errand, they've got to get something very, very quickly, they come out and they look around, it's like, you know, they're on a different planet. You know, they have no idea where their vehicle is. And that's a serious problem with a lot of people. How many times have you opened a refrigerator door, for example, and you stared inside, <laughs> wondering why you were looking in the refrigerator, what was it that you wanted from the refrigerator? Uh, individuals go to a room and they stand in the middle of the room wondering why they're there. Uh, those kinds of things, absent-mindedness. And uh, oftentimes those individuals are young, you know, 25, 30 years old, right. and they're thinking, wow, you know, am I coming down with Alzheimer's? You know, that I have dementia, you know, onset Alzheimer's. You know, what's going on with my mind? I'm too young, you know, to forget these things. Right. Well, it happens to everyone regardless of age. And so what we're about is to help people to, uh, to solve this problem, or at least put a dent in it anyway. Uh, it's called absent-mindedness. Uh, because why go into a stress attack or have a stress attack? Because you have forgotten where you have placed something or you have missed play something that's very, very important to you. Either way, as John already mentioned, uh, stress is a huge enemy oh, yeah. of memory as well as depression. So those are the two things that are just absolutely killers as far as memory is concerned. So uh, we want to share with you, you know, a technique or two, you know, to help with absent-mindedness. And as I mentioned earlier, the biggie, you know, that, uh, that we get in a lot of seminars is, well, how can I remember where I have parked my vehicle? Well, think about the one second John, the one second technique that John offered up. When you get out of your vehicle, first of all, observe your surroundings. 
And by observing surrounding, that doesn't mean observe, you know, the vehicles on either side of you. Because <laughs> they're not going to be there when you get back. No. <laughs> Correct. But we want to <laughs> stay there. And because this is a huge problem, oftentimes people have thought about this and they say, okay, well, let's help the consumer, you know? And so they have these huge, gigantic poles at different places in the parking lot and they have letters or numbers on them to help us to remember. Well, we don't even think about that. So again, we out of the car and into the store. So first of all, take a moment, take a second, observe the surroundings and see if there might be some huge, gigantic pole sitting in the middle of the parking lot, you know, that has a road number or a letter or, uh, you know, a number or something like that, that will help you to remember where your vehicle is. Now, if you don't have that, okay, fine. Then look for something that's stationary. Look for a fence, you know, a pole, uh, you know, something that is not going to move, something that's going to be there when you return. Mm -hmm. So observe your surroundings. Also, here's your, your one second technique. Put Again, action. absolutely. Okay. Walk away from your car, you're going towards the store, walk away from your vehicle, and about two or three seconds, turn around and look at your vehicle just to gain some perspective. And you want to do that maybe about three or four times on your way to the door. And then when you finally arrive, before you go into the store, make one last look at your vehicle. So when you come out of the store, you have some perspective. You at least know the direction uh, as to where your vehicle is. So, and it only takes a second to do that. And if you will follow those instructions, just remember that little technique right there then you'll remember where your vehicle is. And, and you have to also realize, even if people do some of what we're ta talking about, there's going to be an improvement in, the, in absent mindedness. I always kid around in my seminars, I say, I look for the walking dead at the mall. And they say, what do you mean? And these people look like this, looking, looking for their car. <laughs> because, and it's true, if you look at any major mall, there are people there going, the same thing, almost like zombies. And I get a big laugh. And, uh, that's why I'm not in comedy, but that's beside the point. But the other concept is, yeah, as, as soon as you use your natural memory and, and look at it and take notice and all that, you'll help. And by the way, when you go out, make sure you brag about, oh, I know where the car is. <laughs> because that, that's also for bragging lights, these, these, these things that we are talking about. Um, there's a couple other things that uh, come to mind. It's the same thing, as I said before, if you shut the stove, look at it for an extra second or two. Uh, by way of using other techniques we teach at the Memory College or at seminars or at future programs of the Memory Skill Show, uh, by the way, your observation will increase and your concentration will increase without too much work. But we didn't get into the trained memory techniques, so you've got to keep on watching our show. Uh, but it leads to less absent-mindedness when you use a memory skill because uh, your brain is focusing on things a little bit uh, differently. And uh, not to get a headache, because I get that, oh, I don't want to use these memory skill techniques because uh, it gets me a headache. No, no it will, will not. The headache comes is when you don't remember. <laughs> when you're walking around like the zombies in the mall. Uh, so don't create any difficulties. Uh, don't, I, I, always, I always use this in some of the seminars, that, oh, this skill is so hard, I don't, it's not going to work for me. Well, I ask them, have, well, how many times did you use this skill? And they look at you like, uh, never. How can you judge? You have to use it and see if it works for you, and I can get, I guarantee you it will. So now, this is not the skill, but it's still the tips. You've got to try the tips. It will help you with your absent mindedness. There you go. And as John said, remember the one second technique and remember to observe the surroundings. Mm -hmm. And that's not just whether you're in a parking lot, but also if you're walking to the house or wherever and you have an umbrella, anything in your hand that you want to put down, mm -hmm. take a second to observe where you're placing it. Yeah. And you Absolutely. will remember. Absolutely. It forces you to remember. It Absolutely. To, to concentrate. It forces you to observe your surroundings. Right, right. Well, uh, that, that will really uh, help you with your absent mind is this, that simple tip. I guess uh, we'll, we'll leave you now, and, uh, uh, but remember this is the Memory Skill Show with Dr. Joe Pons, 
and John Keith, the memory trainer, and this is the number third show. Um, and in future shows, we will have a possibility of guests, uh, more techniques, uh, but we would like to hear from you. So uh, at www.memorytrainer.com or www.memorycollege.com, you can reach us or watch for the credits at the end of the show. And uh, let us know if these things work or some funny stories. We want to laugh too. And laughter is good medicine, even for your memory. All right, I guess that's it. And uh, have a great, uh, I always kill a kid around. I always have some of the shows that are, and memory events we do, uh, and I do. Uh, we usually say keep remembering. We'll keep on trying to remember and keep remembering again. See you in the next show. Bye.